war. We have war at the moment. It's a horrible crisis. There are women and children dying, huddled in basements, tiny basements in Mariupol. They're dying, bombed, frightened, injured. They've got no food, no heating, terrified. And we've been shown this. But what caused the war? Why has it happened and how can we stop it? Well, first, what we're really seeing is a tussle between the empire of America with Britain hanging on its coattails, who have been pushing for this war for decades. And Russia finally snapped. You've got horrendous um, problems that have been going on for many years, since 2014. A civil war, ethnic groups pitted against each other, funded. You've got neo-Nazis deeply embedded within the Ukrainian government. You've, but essentially they're funded by a few oligarchs. Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world, even more corrupt than Russia. But you've got oligarchs on both sides who own natural resources. And their control of politics, few people, have managed to own land and natural resources. And now they're fighting for that control. Yes, you've got the ethnic story, the Russian people, the, the Western Ukrainian, the Galician peoples in Western Ukraine, with all of their histories of horrendous violence and control. But we have to ask, why are they having this war? Well, the real war is America wants this war. They want to snuff out an independent Russia, and then they want to go on to control China. They want absolute dominance in any, any oligarch. You know, the oligarchs of Wall Street want that control just as much as the oligarchs surrounding the Kremlin. Or the oligarchs of Kiev. That is why these people go to war. So we can prevent war if people forced democratically the governments of America, Britain, and Europe to sue for peace, to create, create a settlement that's acceptable to the Kremlin, then we could have a ceasefire and peace. But we're not promoting that. What we're doing is promoting war. We're putting in our weapons, our advice, our information. We're controlling the narrative to make sure this war continues, that it will become a bloodbath. And so far, the Russian seems to have not, have tried to protect people as best as possible. There is a lot more they could do. And if this war descends into a slugging match, many, many people will die in horrendous ways. So we need to try and break through the fog of propaganda from both sides and get to peace. But we're not going to do that because there's too much money and power at stake. So then we come to the next. What is the true fundamental solution of war? We have to take away the profits that businesses get. People. Don't talk about business. Talk about people. Some individuals, powerful individuals, make a lot of war. We've got the military industrial complexes of Britain, America, of Russia, desperately trying to sell their weapons. We've got the, the oligarchs who own the mechanisms of commerce, finance, and who own natural resources. And they're all trying to get to a position where they can own and extract that wealth. Well, there's a simple solution to this. What we need to do is stop taxing your wages, stop taxing the ridiculous, you know, VAT's the worst of all taxes, then the next worst tax is uh, national insurance, which has just gone up. Thank you, uh, uh, Chancellor, for your amazing idea to raise taxes on working people and yet cut a few pence off the price of oil. 
as a gimmick. What we need to be doing is reducing taxes on working people, but putting more taxes on the monopolies and harms we do. But getting back, we can stop war very easily. We can stop war by taxing natural resources. Land value taxes, natural resource taxes, and externality taxes. Now, if we have that, both in Russia, and Russia has a long history with that, Tolstoy famously advocate, advocating this tax change, and Winston Churchill advocating the tax change in Britain, but never quite managing it. But we have to defeat these powerful oligarchs, and we don't defeat them through diplomatic efforts. We defeat them with tax policy. We tax natural resources. And if you tax away the monopoly profits to be gained from the ownership of land and natural resources, you take away the reason why people end up choosing war. It's not that they go, ooh, I'm going to make loads of money. It's just, oh, that's a nice idea. I can make a bit more cash. So it takes away the opposition to war from very powerful people. And while the normal people of this world abhor war and wish to stop war, the rich and the powerful actually make money from war. And that is what we need to do. So if any democratic system needs to change tax policy, tax policy that favours everything we like, shifting our taxes from our wages and our trade, putting it on to um, natural resource tax, the external tax, taxing on carbon, taxing pollution, and taxing land, a land value tax, will take away the incentive for people to wage war and hurt others. You know, the incentives, why do, why do rich people give these neo-Nazis in Ukraine all this money and put them into government? Because they are a tool of violence and they can profit from that because they get a hold of more profits from ownership and control. A tax policy that taxes land and natural resources and the pollution, the externalities, that takes away the profits to be made. Therefore, all these powerful oligarchs won't have an incentive to create the political structures, the political parties owning the, the means of communication, the television companies, that will take them away and we will get peace because there's no money to be made from war.